Welcome, this is Emil, you're watching MyBar, and in today's video we are going to be taking a look at compiler construction, a subject I thoroughly enjoy, and more specifically we're going to look at a parser design for a collapsing and draining system. What is a parser? Well, here's the Wikipedia definition for those of you who want to read it, and it's a syntactical analysis of computer languages or data structures like in a file format. But basically, you're just uh, taking a raw string input and converting it into a tree structure like this. This tree structure is called an abstract syntax tree. And our goal is to take a raw input like this and then output an AST. Now, this is done using a lexer and then a parser. Uh, the lexer is very traditional, so you can just go look at how that works. But um, And then we take the tokens. The tokens are what we feed into our collapsing system. And how does that work? Well, basically, we iteratively in a multipass system go over all the tokens and collapse them into AST nodes and then we go over uh, OST nodes and collapse them into smaller AST nodes. And we'll, to explain what I mean by that is we're going to go through an example. Here we have an input string z equals 80 divided by 2 and x equals 10 times 50 divided by 2 plus z. And as you can see, it uh, the the, the Lexer spits out all these tokens, and then we the AST node is the base type of all AST, uh, nodes in the AST. I will look at the code after this example, and then that will make more sense. But yeah, the raw is the, the token, and so we just load in the tokens. Now we need to convert this uh, structure, this buffer, into one that looks like this. And this is just a one-to-one -one type conversion pass, is, is what I like to call it. And it will take a row, the, the number, shove it into the row of a new literal value node, and we shove that into the value of expression node. And that's what we kind of see here. We have 80, which is a literal value node, and then that goes into value into expression, and that's what you get. The same goes for the identifier node, so like here. But like, for example, the equal or the times a token just stays as is. Now we want to take this converted one and first apply these two rules in the next pass to get this. And we can just ignore this first part because basically that's just wrapping it inside of an expression node. Um, so what we really care about is this part. And we're doing division and multiplication first so that we can have order of, of operation, you know, the uh, arithmetic precedent stuff work properly. And so the first thing we have in this expression node followed by a divided, followed by an expression node. So whenever the parser sees a expression node like this, followed by a, a divide token, followed by an expression node like this, it will collapse it into a new uh, expression value node with a division node. But A and B will be the whatever here, A will be the first expression node and B will be the second expression node. But you'll note they are not wrapped inside an expression node anymore. They were passed directly, and that's because they were drained. And I'll show you how the drain code works when we get to the code itself. It's extremely simple. It's like two lines of code. Um, yeah, and then the same happened over here. The So the 80 divided by 2 collapsed into a division node, and then the division node here collapsed into a multiplication node on the A branch, which would be this part over here. And that is 10 times 50, which is what we see here, divided by 2, and then we have plus Z, which will happen in the next pass. So pass two is exactly the same thing, but just for addition and subtraction. And so what we'll see now is we here's the previous slide state. Now we want to end up with this state. And to get there, we want to see, okay, we have a expression node, a plus, and a, a um, another expression node. So here we see that we have an expression node, a plus, an expression node. So that collapses into an addition node. On the A side, we have this bit over here. And on the B side, we have this bit and that collapsed down like that, but, um, and yeah, so then we have x equals some expression node, and then we have z equals some expression node. In this case, the display, this debug display that I made, uh, drains it before it draws it on the screen. Um, so, or, or, or in this case, it prints it out in the terminal. But so yeah, that that is an AST node, uh, an expression node under the hood. And then the final pass, pass three, is an assignment node, which says when we see a, expression node and an equal token followed by an expression node, then we'll say that the z equals whatever this is, and that's what you see over here, here, assignment of z, of the value of this. Same thing goes down here. And then finally, 
and once this iterative process has been applied, we see that z equals 80 divided by 2, which is the division node, and then x equals the addition of a z, which is down here, and then a, multi a division of a multiplication of um, 10 by 50. And that's what we kind of get over there. And um, yeah, that's how that works. It's real simple, the, the idea. The idea is to have these few tiny simple rules that we just apply iteratively in multiple passes and end up with a parser. In fact, uh, a much, the code we're about to look at even does uh, functions and uh, the signatures and the arguments and parameters and so on. And it, uh, the entire implementation is 250 lines of code. Um, so, you know, it's it's absurdly little code to achieve such complex results. It's a really great method. I like it a lot. And um, yeah, you know, uh, let's go look at the code next and then call it good. So looking at the code here, we have this test file over here uh, that we're trying to parse. And then the way that works is we load up that file and get the tokens back. Then I print out the tokens just to make sure the lexer is lexing pro properly. And that's what we see over here. Then we shove that into the parser and then debug print that AST and, and that's what you get out here. And um, I'm, to keep it simple, I'm just going to erase this and do x equals 10 times 50. Just so we have a very simple example here to, to look at and not have to spend hours sifting through complex trees. Um, yeah, so here we go. And yeah, so we have x equals 10 times 50 and start it in a file. And then that's just the assignment of x to the multiplication node of 10 by 50. Nice and easy. Now, the way this works is uh, we have a grammar file here specifying all the, the rules. Then over here, we have a little program that reads that grammar file and generates a C sharp file, this one. And oh, this hurts your eyes. But it basically, it's just that rules created into a list of a list of a uh, tuple of an array of objects uh, with a function that accepts an array of AST nodes returning an AST node, which is just the collapsing rules uh, em embodied in code itself. Um, so that are, those are the pass rules. And um, before I made that file, I wrote this by hand and that's how that looked. <laughs> but we're not using that anymore. Now, this is the AST node. And all of this code is to make the little pretty debug print. Um, so not very useful. Uh, we can just collapse that away here. So this is the actual, all the code there is. And this is the draining mechanism I was talking about. It's really simple. For example, when the expression node drains, it just returns the value directly. The most complex uh, drain override is the list node over here. And it will allows you to have a list, for example, a list of arguments in the, for example, when you're declaring a method, we have a list of arguments that can be any length. And that's just a way of using the collapsing method while still parsing out that list and then draining it into a single list that is condensed. Um, so that's what that's all about. Um, but yeah, so also really simple. And uh, the way the parser works is real simple again. Uh, we have the type conversion rules. Those first two rules, I just directly made by hand because they're so simple. We load all the tokens into this first buffer. I used to have a two buffer system and I might bring it back because it's multi-threadable, but for now I'm just keeping it simple. So that's why it's called first buffer, not just buffer. Uh, and then we load an AST node where raw equals the token. Then we figure out how many passes there are and we loop over every pass. On the first pass, we do the type conversion stuff. Then on the second pass, we start doing it normally. And then we go through every single rule in that pass and we start checking the whether it matches, uh, whether, um, where is it? Whether these requirements were met, so the, these requirements. Uh, make that go away, that go away, and the part over here, right. And then, um, yeah, so if it does, it gets added. Finally, if everything matched, we, we um, drain all the nodes so that everything collapses properly and then we insert the result so that func is what's executing and then we uh, remove that the, the nodes that we just collapse so that it becomes less and then we go to start over 
uh, which is over here. So we keep doing this over and over until we don't find any more rules to match. Then we move on to the next pass and repeat until it's done. Finally, we load all of these into a document node and uh, we don't want the start and end the file token to be there. So we just don't add those and then we drain every node when we add it. And that's it, like that's one, 125, you know, if you add in the little thingy over here, you know, this, this is not necessary, so I guess, but yeah, so it, it's extremely little code to achieve some, achieve some really good results. Um, and for those of you who, who care enough, um, here is this complicated code. There's still a bug in here. Um, I need to, to apply this, so I need to change this madness <laughs> to be like uh, um, the way that the bracket stuff works. So I, I'm just, I need to do that. But yeah, so this will work properly in the end. But uh, so yeah, this should be a, a code block and not the raw thingy there, but it's fine for the most part. So here you can see the tokens that are next and then the final output. And the A and B is ignored in this case. We only care about um, these, this one, this one is just for the semantics to actually, the, you know, the internal workings to actually make it work. Um, and yeah, so, and then the, here's the body of the, the thing and it works nice. I like it. Uh, it's a very simple way of making a browser. It's really compact and simple and in theory, it should be multi-threadable. So that's cool. Um, yeah, I like it a lot. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time and enjoy.